Hey guys, it's Dr. Brown with Kubo Math coming to you from Tarlock City, Philippines. And tonight it's Calculus 2, completing the square. Okay, now before we jump into that, we're going to solve a couple, uh, two integrals, you, one of them using u sub, and the second one uh, we'll use the integration by parts because we're going to need the answer to those two integrals to solve this completing the square, okay? So I don't want to just go through this exercise and then say, oh, by the way, that's this, and just throw a big, long something out there. So let's work through those. We've had u sub, we've had integration by parts, so we can do this. So let's think about the integral of secant x dx. All right, now this one has a little bit of a trick, and this is about knowing derivatives. This is critical. Okay, so if we think about that, and we were to multiply that by secant x, well, multiply by 1, but it's secant x plus tangent x. Okay, over secant x plus tangent x. So all I've done is multiplied secant x by 1, still to dx. Okay, I'm going to distribute the secant x to the inside. So I end up with secant x times secant x would be secant x, well, secant squared x, and then secant x tangent x. Okay over secant x plus tangent x. And all of this, we're taking, integrating that with respect to x. Now, if I were to do a u sub and let u equal secant x plus tangent x, so u equals secant x plus tangent x, du equals well, the derivative of secant, secant x is secant x tangent x. Okay, plus the derivative of tangent x, well, the derivative of tangent is secant squared. dx, all oh, this is dx, okay? Now then, you can see where this is going. If I take and isolate dx, I have du over secant x tangent x plus, I got left my x out, secant x times tangent x plus secant squared x, and that equals dx. Now then, let's go back and do the u sub here. I know what you're thinking, isn't this completing the square? We're, we're going to need this answer and then one more to be able to solve this. Okay, so bear with me. All right, now then, we have on the bottom secant x plus tangent x, that's u. So there's u. And then uh, the top, I have secant squared x plus secant x tangent x and then I'm going to replace dx with du over this. So I have du over secant x tangent x plus secant squared x. Now of course you'll notice this if you flip this around it's exactly what you have on the top. So this divided by that, they go away, and I end up with the integral of du over u. Oh, well, the integral of the derivative of a function over the function, that's the very definition of the natural log of u. And what did we say u was? u was secant x plus tangent x. Okay, so the integral of secant x dx 
equals the natural log of secant x plus tangent x plus c. All right, we're going to store that up here in the corner if I can work through this cord. All right, the integral of secant x dx equals the natural log of secant x plus tangent x plus c. All right, now then let's clean our board off. And we need to go through one more integral. And this time we'll use the integration by parts. Hang in there. We're going to get to completing the square. I just thought this was the best way to go about this. Maybe I'm wrong. <laughs> you never know. I just thought once we get these two answers, then the other part will flow quickly. Okay. What, do, what would be the integral of secant cubed x dx? Well, well, let's take and break this apart. And let's say, use the di method here, di. You know, this is the same as the integral of secant x times secant squared x dx. Okay, well, can I take the integral of secant squared x? Well, the derivative of tangent, we just used that, was secant squared. So the integral of secant squared would be tangent. So I can do that. So I'm going to put secant squared x dx here, which leads me to do the derivative of secant x. Now we know we've got a positive, negative, positive, negative, and so on. All right, the derivative of secant x, we just did that a moment ago, is secant x tangent x. The integral of secant squared x is tangent x. Hey, hey, uh, I, think, I think I can integrate this. So that was one of our stops, okay? So the integral of secant cubed x dx equals positive, positive, positive. So it's secant x times tangent x. And then minus that integral. Minus the integral of secant x times tangent times tangent. So I'm going to go ahead and say secant x times tangent squared x dx. Okay, you know one of the trig identities, sec or tangent squared equals secant squared minus 1. So I can replace this with secant squared minus 1. So let me just do that here for the sake of space. Secant squared x minus 1 dx. That's the same as my tangent squared that I had here. So now it's secant times this. So what do I have? I have the integral of secant cubed x dx equals secant x tangent x minus let me do go ahead and distribute the secant x into this. So minus the integral of secant cubed x minus secant x dx. Now let me just go ahead and separate those out. Probably be the best way. dx minus, let's see. So I had minus secant x, but it's minus a minus, so there's a, let's see, let me not confuse that. Let me just go ahead and leave it for now. So this is minus all of this, secant x dx. So I won't, I, that way I don't get the signs confused. That's one of my kryptonites, by the way. So, so it was secant x times negative 1 gave me this negative secant x. So now, for the sake of simplicity, 
I can take that off, make that a positive. Now then, I have an integral. There we go. Now you'll notice. I have a secant cubed x here and a secant cubed x there. Why don't I add an integral of secant cubed x dx to that? Well, what you do to one side, you have to do to the other side. So I'm going to add one here. So what do we have there? Well, that integral plus the same thing gives me two of those. So I have two times the integral of secant cubed x dx equals secant x tangent x. And these cancel plus the integral of secant x dx. Okay. Wow, we did this integral just a moment ago. So we, we, we know what that is. Okay, why don't we go ahead and replace this with the natural log. That's the natural log of secant x plus tangent x. And that was the absolute value of that, plus c. Okay. Now, I don't want to know what two of these is. I only want one. So, I'm going to multiply that by one half. And if I do that, I can multiply this times one half and this times one half. So, one half times two, that becomes one. That goes away. So, the integral of secant cubed x dx is one half secant x tangent x plus one half the natural log of secant x plus tangent x plus c. All right, I'm going to store that one up here. So the integral of secant cubed x dx equals one half secant x tangent x plus one half natural log of the absolute value of secant x plus tangent x plus c. Okay. Now then, we're ready <laughs> to jump into our problem. And you'll see in just a moment why we've done this. Isn't this cool? I like stuff like this for some odd reason. I think it's exciting to challenge your mind because if you're like me, my body is already played out, so the mind is about all I have left. So we'll exp try to use it as best we can. Okay. Completing the square, which is what we're, <laughs> the purpose of this video was. If you look at the form of a perfect square, x squared plus bx, in this case, plus b over 2 squared. Okay, and that would give me x plus b over 2 squared. So then I would have a square. Okay, if that's the case, I could say, well, b is 4. Well, b over 2 is equal to 4 over 2, and that equals 2. Okay, well, what does that mean? Well, that, that means if I want to make this a perfect square, I need to take this b over 2, or, or this 2 and square it, or 4 divided by 2 squared. And that would be the term I need to add to this. Okay, well... What does that mean? x squared plus 4x. Well, 2 squared is 4. So I'm going to add 4. That's fantastic. Well, I added 4. I need to subtract 4 also to, get, to keep the same relationship. 
Well, this would be the integral of the square root of x plus 2, remember that's b over 2 here, 2 squared minus, well, what is 4? It's 2 squared also. So that would become my new calculations that I could, I could go for because I can do now a trig sub, ha, ah, a trig sub and do something with that. Okay, well having said that, if you think about, let's say tangent square, tangent squared theta, that's secant squared theta minus one. So it somewhat takes on that form, something minus uh, a number here. So if I let a equal two, I can let x plus two equal uh, a secant theta. Hmm, remember when we went through trig sub, we used that quite a bit. Well, if I take the derivative of both sides, I end up with dx equals a, what's the derivative of secant? It's secant theta tangent theta. Chain rule, d theta. Wow, okay. I can just sub out for this guy here. So let me do it here and then I'll transfer it while it's all together. So now I have the square root of a secant theta, which is what's on the inside, a secant theta, parentheses squared, minus a squared. Now I'm replacing dx with all of this. I'm going to put this a on the outside and all of that's going to be times secant theta or a secant theta tangent theta d theta. See how it's coming together? <laughs> maybe not, maybe. Okay, all right, let me just transfer all of that to up here. See if we can work along here. So I've got the integral of a times the square root of, actually I'm gonna go ahead, I'll just, let me factor this really quick before we go. If I have a times secant theta, parentheses squared, on the inside I end up with a squared, secant squared, theta minus a squared times secant theta tangent theta d theta, okay? If I were to factor this, I could factor out the a square, and that would give me a square times secant squared minus one. Now let me take that up here. So a times a squared times secant squared theta minus one times secant theta tangent theta d theta. Okay, you know one of the rules of square roots, uh, if I have a square root of x times y, that's the square root of x times the square root of y. Having said that, I can take the square root of a squared, which is a, bring it to the outside, and this becomes a times a. Okay, so that would be the integral. Secant squared theta minus one is tangent squared theta. So I have the square root of tangent squared theta times secant theta tangent theta d theta. Okay, I'm about to run out of space here. I'm gonna move it over just a little bit. So this equals a square. Now the square root of tangent square is tangent. Tangent times tangent square, or tangent times tangent gives me tangent square. So now I have the integral of square root of this is tangent. So I have secant theta times tangent square d theta, all that times 
a square. Well, what is tangent squared? Oh, it's secant squared theta minus one. Well, okay, that's the integral of secant theta, and you can see how this is gonna work out, times secant squared theta minus one d theta, and that equals a squared times, we'll distribute this to the inside, the integral of secant cubed theta minus secant theta d theta. Well, a squared, what's the, and you know, of course, this is, you could break this into two integrals. This is the integral of secant cubed theta d theta minus the integral of secant theta. Well, the integral of secant cubed theta was this. So this is going to be multiplied by one half secant theta tangent theta. We're in the theta world, plus one half the excuse me the natural log natural log of secant theta plus tangent theta. Kind of getting stretched out here. Secant theta plus tangent theta. Um, okay. That's secant cubed minus the integral of secant theta. So it's minus the natural log of secant x or secant theta plus tangent theta. Whoa, okay. And all of that's times the a squared. And what was a? a was 2. So that's, that number is 4. All right. Well, if I have four times one half, it, ultimately it's going to give me a two outside. But before I do that, I have one half natural log of secant theta plus tangent theta. So half of one of these minus a f one of them. So that would give me minus one half of one of these. So I have, I'm going to scoot over a little bit farther here, this a squared, which is 4, times the 1 half, and then I have secant theta, tangent theta, plus 1 half minus a full one gives me minus 1 half natural log of secant theta plus tangent theta, okay? Now, if I multiply four times what's on the inside, I end up with two. So the one-halves go away, and I'm just going to put the two on the outside, okay? Now, you may be thinking, but not yet. <laughs> We've got to get back to the X world, okay? All right, so we need to erase something somewhere. Uh, let me... Let me just erase this and we'll start working our way back down again. Okay. And it is really sticky here tonight. You can tell by the way the board doesn't erase, it doesn't like that blue marker. All right, so we have two times secant theta tangent theta minus the natural log of the absolute value of secant theta plus tangent theta. Well, what's theta? Or what, what's, how do we get secant and tangent? Well, you know we had x plus 2 equals a secant theta. So x plus 2 equals a secant theta. So x, if I divide both sides by a, x plus 2 over a equals secant theta. Well, now if I draw a triangle, I would always encourage you to put it like that. That way it's always in the same direction and it just helps you 
or at least it helps me stay organized. Secant's the opposite of cosine. Cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse. So this is hypotenuse, x plus 2 over a. Of course, a equals 2. Now, if that's secant, tangent is this side divided by that side. Well, what is this side? This side would be the square root of x plus 2 squared minus a squared, which was 2 squared or 4. We'll just write it as 4. Okay, so that's the hypotenuse squared minus this side squared would give me that side. And then tangent would be this over that. So now we're ready to fill in the blanks here. So I have 2 times secant. And secant is x plus 2 over 2. So I have x plus 2 over 2 times tangent, which is this side, the opposite over adjacent. So I have x plus 2 squared minus 4 square root of that divided by 2 minus the natural log of the absolute value of secant theta, which was x plus 2 over 2 plus tangent theta, which is the square root of x plus 2 squared minus 4, that's all under the radical, divided by uh, this side, which was 2. So that's all under the absolute value sign, plus c. And that, obviously I could reduce the 2, one of those 2's. I'll just leave it as it is. So that would be how we could use completing the square to solve for that problem. That's a lot like reaching around the back of your head to scratch your elbow. So we had to do quite a few things. U sub to come up with secant, uh, secant x, the integral of secant x. We also had to use um, integration by parts to do the integral of secant cubed. And then we did completing the square methodology and then trig sub whoa, to be able to get that answer. And now that I look at that, that's pretty sloppy. Sorry. Okay. Why are we doing this? Hey, we want to try to be together in our development of a better tomorrow and do that through math as it states down at the bottom of the video. We're just trying to share some tools with you to help you do better on the job, help you grow your career, be smarter tomorrow than today, always try to trend better. Even you stump your toe and fall down, fall forward, it's still progress, okay? All right, well, that's all for now. Study, 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 and we'll talk to you next time. Thanks.